Alright, so Charlie Fi dropped this motherfucking uh theory. And I watched it while I was driving around. And he got some interesting ideas in here, you know what I'm saying? I feel like some of the stuff that he was saying, I don't know. I because I don't I don't believe that Memphis is gonna play a big role in this game. I, I just don't believe that. I'm pretty sure he's probably just gonna be like a boss. Maybe some dialogue, right? Some dialogue, like hinting at like certain things, maybe. But like outside of like his boss fight, I I doubt it. I doubt it. Because I think they want to emphasize the shadow and black doom stuff. Uh plus I feel like adding Memphis will just add too much to it. But I want to watch it with you guys to get you guys thoughts and opinions on this thing as well. So let's go ahead and dive on Very good theory. Do you remember this line? Sonic, I think I've discovered yeah, what I've seen the video for is. He, he it might be you. Uh, did everything now, wrong? chances Joints? are that if you've ever played Sonic Adventure 2, you haven't come across this. Oh, yeah, this, this, this is the best fucking line. Sonic, I think I've discovered what the ultimate life form is. It might be you. Sega really looked at that and was like, yeah, no, he fucking hates Sonic. He fucking hates this Gus. He doesn't want to be around him ever. He doesn't respect him. I hate Shadow the Hedgehog, bro, because why is he like a brownish, like, like black here, bro? I, it's so nasty. Now, chances like are that if you've ever black. played Sonic yeah, Adventure 2, you haven't come across this dialogue before. In the 20 odd years I've been playing this game, I've literally never come across it either. I only know it exists because of the dialogue files being posted onto the internet. But it plays well into the fight against the final hazard, the game's final boss, after about 3 or 4 minutes, so a lot of people still may not be aware that this line exists. In Sonic Generations, there's a line of dialogue, also from Shadow, that has gone down in infamy for a number of reasons. For one, I believe it's literally the only time Shadow speaks in a cutscene. Two, the English cast had just been replaced the year very, prior, so- Very jarring, you got this, Sonic. I talked about this in another video as well, talking about um, Shadow's voice acting uh, with Kirk Thornton, but yeah, very jarring, but yeah, that is literally the only thing, like, it comes out of nowhere, he doesn't even say anything here. It's, it's funny, he says Chaos Control, Chaos Spear, and stuff like that, when he get, gets the orbs, but it sounds so similar to Jason that you just don't notice you just don't bat an eye at it like it's just oh cool was much that, not that used to the new actors for these characters and it seems strange that someone who is usually so involved in taking down the final boss with sonic is not only choosing to take a back seat but is actively being encouraging to sonic mind you this wouldn't be the first I judge you have going, bro. he does this in heroes as well but at least there you could make the argument that he was helping damage metal madness letting right. team sonic so basically finish him off. So as basically, well. he's saying, like, okay, why was he on the, you know, the sidelines? Like, why didn't he, you know what I'm saying, lock him with my boy Sonic, right? You know? Seat, but is actively being encouraging to Sonic. Mind you, this wouldn't be the first time. He does this in Heroes as well, but at least there, you could make the argument that he was helping damage Metal Madness, letting Team Sonic finish him off. As well, that version of Shadow had amnesia, so it's possible he didn't even know he had a super form? I don't know. The point is, among the cast of characters, Shadow's line I don't think he didn't know that he had a... I, I don't know, because you could kind of say that with the original transformation in SA2 is like oh wow I guess I guess I could just go Super Saiyan I right, yeah sure I, I don't know I feel like he he just knows right maybe I feel like he just knows like yeah I could do that too but you know have at it type shit or, or maybe he didn't I don't know one that stands out I don't think I've ever seen anybody even mention anything any of the other characters say and obviously with the upcoming Sonic X Shadow Generations featuring Shadow's very own adventure during the events of this story, it makes his lack of involvement with the final boss make fans raise their eyebrows even more. Why would Shadow not get involved? Why leave everything to Sonic? Is this even the same Shadow as the one we'll play as in Shadow Generations? Well, I honestly think so, and I have a hunch as to how they're going to turn one of Shadow's most infamous lines into what perhaps will be one of his most beloved ones. So, in fact, hold on, let me go back so I make sure. Is this even the same Shadow as the one we'll play as in Shadow Generations? Congratulations, you're 1000% right, because we just got that confirmed today in the uh, episode 2 of Dark Beginnings, which is... Really cool, really nice info. I have a hunch as to how they're going to turn one of Shadow's most infamous lines into what perhaps will be one of his most beloved ones. As a brief recap, Shadow's role in Generation yeah, the is the rival fight representing the Dreamcast era. Once you defeat him, you obtain the Yellow Chaos Emerald, and the fight against him is a remake of the second time you Which face him. Which is the one Sonic that he Adventure has right in after the fucking, you know what I'm saying? So it, all, it all makes sense, it all makes sense. It makes sense. Ah. Against him is a remake of the second time you face him in Sonic Adventure 2, right after Sonic's final rush, updated to better suit the Boost Formula gameplay. Mentioning this is important because people have wondered if Shadow's story would even cross over into Sonic's story, but the thing is, if this is THE Shadow, like we're meant to believe that the one we fight in the base version of Gens is, then of course the rival fight needs to take place, and unless Shadow Generations happens to be set in another dimension or something, Shadow has to be defeated by Sonic in right. order for Sonic to I'm really the interested to see what they do with this, to bro. To add to that, the Sony State of Play and the Tokyo Game Show Samsung Gaming promo each featured new footage of Sonic and Shadow, in what looks to be a pre-rendered cutscene during this exact fight, so there's no- it do look pre-rendered, yeah, because it's not running at 60. Um, also, I, I can't believe people saw this cool-ass shit and was like, oh, uh, they're using the Frontiers uh, Forces model for something. Like, shut up, bro. 
no way that we're not also fighting Sonic as Shadow, though ah, probably with the a model too, but different way, a way that still ends in Sonic getting the upper hand and taking the Emerald. There's a line of dialogue from the latest story trailer that I keep thinking about, which is slightly obscured by the music. Now, I know a lot, maybe even most people would disagree with me, but I think that it's a conversation not between Shadow and Black Doom, but between Shadow and Mephilus. Now, yeah, I know this is where I'm like, ah. Uh. That's not what Mephilus sounded like in 06, and that's not what his Japanese voice sounded like either, the latter version of the cast being more consistent. As a counter-argument, though, to say that can't be Mephilus because it doesn't sound like Dan Green is like saying that Metal Overlord can't be Metal Overlord because he's being played by Mike Pollock and not Ryan Drummond. Yeah, and when you compare is, the previous line yeah, from sure. Black Doom... The promised time will arrive once more. ...to the next spoken line... I shall put your power to the test. I don't know, they don't sound the same to me. Black I think it's still Black Doom, though, right? I... Definitely still think it's Black Doom. It could just be Black Doom and that big egg thing or whatever. That's what he transforms into, that big Doom egg or whatever. It looks like a fucking angel. He could have like a more distorted voice or whatever. Like, we don't know where they're pulling this clip from, right? Again, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't I also just don't see them using that voice for Mephilus. Like, I just don't. <laughs> Black Doom sounds gruffer, clearer. This second voice sounds more whispery, with more effects laid on top of it than Black Doom's has. And I'm willing to believe that this is Black Doom. And Meph Mephilus didn't have any, like, he didn't have any effects on his shit, so why would they use them here? Like, I, they would just get a different voice. That it's another version of Black Doom and not Mephilus, but considering that that line that plays just as Mephilus is revealed, it does make me connect the two. What doesn't help is the line the second voice says later. Now, I can't be 100% positive about this, but I'm almost sure the voice says he is the warrior, a destroyer. I think and that's again, what he that says voice for doesn't sure. sound like the other instances of Black Doom to me. The only thing it sounds similar to is this instance of Doom's eye laughing during a transition in Radical Highway, which. Right. <laughs> so if it sounds like something, it's probably not the other one. It's probably not Mephilus. Like, again, he could have like a different sound, like more. Um, you know what I'm saying, effects on him with when Doom's eyes speaking to like differentiate the two or whatever. Also doesn't sound like the rest of Black Doom's dialogue in this gameplay demo. We meet again, Shadow the Hedgehog. And that laugh is significant to me because it could also just be inconsistent the with the voice, right? Time before the reveal that Marie and Gerald are also in white space, but only in the English version of the trailer. It's notably absent from the Japanese version, and while the reason could be totally innocuous, the fact that it's a laugh that I think sounds different from Black Doom that plays when the time meter is on screen, I don't think is a coincidence. But anyway, what relevance does that second line have? Well, in 06, Mephilus' ultimate plan was to deceive everyone in order to achieve his goal. He convinces Silver that Sonic is the Iblis Trigger, the one responsible for unleashing the flames of disaster and destruction. Flames of disaster! Omega, okay, I was, I was listening to it. I wasn't watching it. I was just listening to it while I was driving. <laughs> Why did he put Wade there? The one responsible for unleashing the flames of disaster in the world, <laughs> and he convinces as Omega as well. that he is the one that eventually incarcerates oh Shadow in the future, despite the fact that neither of those things are verified truths. He gives Silver a vision of Sonic among flames, and shows Shadow and Omega that the former ends up imprisoned again, but they're never actually shown the things that Mephilus claims will happen. Additionally, he tries to convince Shadow that, because the humans end up betraying him, that he should join Mephilus in order to destroy humanity. Now, we don't know how relevant Mephilus' role in Shadow Generations will be, if he'll even have a larger presence beyond just his boss fight. But I do think that line is meant to be a red herring. Shadow replies by saying, Yes, the warrior that will destroy you. Which, because you probably can't hear the previous line well, you might think is Shadow referring to himself. But the voice clearly doesn't say you are the warrior, so they're obviously referring to a third person. If they're not talking about Shadow, who are they talking about? Well, the only character I can think of is the only one who has canonically defeated Shadow before, Sonic. But so what? Just because of this one line, I think Shadow thinks of Sonic as that guy? Well, I do think I that like Me that. I like thinking of that, though. Like, so I don't think it's Mephilus, but it's definitely... It, it would make sense for Mephilus to say some stuff like that because of the context of 06, but it just doesn't sound like him. 
I, I could be wrong, but I don't know. Like, I don't know. And plus, again, I don't think he's going to play have any relevance in this story because that's that's a loaded line. Like, that's like a loaded line, you know? But yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I like the whole angle that he's taking here, right? And I'm going to let him take it. influence extends beyond this as well. In Shadow the Hedgehog, it's not exactly clear if Black Doom actually sends Shadow to the past during the level The Doom, but we can assume it's all an illusion because he replaces Maria during the subsequent boss to further convince Shadow that he should exactly so he the next time against that guy. Mephilus, well, I'm however, praying that they have no a fucking change of heart. Time, and is in God, fact the reason Shadow ends up in the destroyed future in 06. The reason this is relevant is because know, yeah. I believe that it would serve a very similar plot point in Shadow Generations. In Frontiers, it's never properly explained how or why the Death Egg robot we see on Chaos Island is destroyed. We sort of just assume that it was a remnant from the events of Forces, but considering that Shadow travels through both Sunset Heights and Chaos Island, I think we can make the case that maybe that particular Death Egg robot traveled through time and space with Shadow. I think the reason he travels through the events That's in the future is that Mephilus will try to show Shadow that Sonic's actions are responsible for awakening the end. Yeah. He is the warrior. The dis and, then this, then, then, and then, you know, whenever they mention the end, I'm like, aye, bro. <laughs> I'm like, aye, okay. Destroyer. <laughs> I also believe that even if this perhaps shakes Shadow a bit, he won't falter. He knows Sonic better than that. As for the line, Yes, the warrior that will destroy you. I think that Shadow Generations' main goal as a narrative is to fill in the gaps the games haven't fully explored so far, and to consolidate bits and pieces of lore that have been strewn throughout the years. The thing that most convinces me about this is the inclusion of Emerald in the animation Dark Beginnings. He's a character that is seldom talked about, especially in the main series. As well, they're finally explicitly confirming the purpose of Project Shadow and Shadow's Origins, which I believe will bring together everything about the series' lore that Gerald knows about. Now, for the longest time, there's been this theory that Shadow's design is based off of Supersonic, and there's nothing that really debunks that theory. As we know, Gerald must have known about the Knuckles clan and no doubt traveled to Angel Island at some point. There's a reason he developed the artificial chaos to resemble the God of Destruction, which he must have learned about from a mural. The only other mural we know about, besides the one depicting Perfect Chaos, is the Sonic 3 and Knuckles mural, depicting the fight between Eggman and the Final Weapon and Super Sonic over the Master Emerald. But who's to say that Gerald didn't mistake this mural for himself, holding a Chaos Emerald, creating a hedgehog-like creature? I think that it's entirely possible that Shadow, while being able to talk to Professor Gerald again, learns about this aspect of his origins. Except, he does find out that this mural didn't depict his creation, but the might of Super Sonic. There's something special about that blue hedgehog. Because of him, they were able to stop the Ark from destroying the Earth. Without him, it may not have been possible to stop Solaris. Without him, the world was taken over by a mad scientist and an illusion creating Jackal. He may have been the key that unleashed the Destroyer of Worlds, but he was also the one who managed to defeat it. Shadow may be the ultimate life form, but if Sonic can go toe to toe with him and even defeat Shadow, he's a let him cook. <laughs> what does that make Sonic? Yeah, I go like Son this. This was when he was like, damn, <laughs> I can kind of fucking see it. God damn it, <laughs> I got me. I, I, I can see it. I can see it, but I don't know. It's too many factors that like just are too unclear. I don't know. Something else you might be familiar with is that at one point Ian Flynn, who's been yeah, yeah, Sega. I don't think they would go down this route. Like this is some shit Ian Flynn would do. Like this is a very 2000s era like way of thinking and i respect it because you know what i'm saying that was you know what i'm saying peak right but yeah nah involved with writing for the sonic series once detailed that he strongly believed there was a connection between mephilus and the time eater now i'm not sure how much i buy into this theory i do agree that there are a lot of similarities and i'm not against them going down this route but they're really selling this as a story between shadow and black doom more than anything I mention it because on the off chance that there does end up being a connection, it makes sense that this is something that Shadow would leave up to Sonic. Where Shadow uses a combination of his newly acquired Doom powers to fight off his final boss, whatever this thing ends up being lore-wise, the only thing that can defeat the might of the Eggman piloting the Time Eater would be two Super Sonics. And I mean, really think about that line in Shadow's response. He is the warrior, a destroyer. Yes, the warrior who will destroy you. Considering that Sonic doesn't fight Black Doom, nor does he really have a reason to due to the fact that he's unaware of Black Doom's return, the only character he could be talking to is someone that we know Sonic is going to defeat in the future, which as of generations could be the Time Eater, Zavok, <laughs> you're funny, Infinite, and the End. Now, considering that the speech pattern doesn't match the end's more Get off my screen, get off my screen, nor bro. Nor does it align with how Infinite talks about Sonic, that really only leaves the Time Eater, whom we know doesn't speak. But what if there was a version of him that did? 
What if there was a part of Mephilus that survived? Somehow Mephilus Mach returned. managed to when his house got blown up by a giant space laser, so we're supposed to believe. Side and check. I know what you're thinking, but Sonic never defeats Mephilus. They never even fight. And yeah, technically, but Sonic does fight Solaris, which Mephilus is a fragment of, and is ultimately the one that convinces Elise to blow out the true form of Solaris. And the more I think about it, there are a ton of similarities between the two. They're shadowy creatures who have time travel powers, and as Solaris, have a very similar looking nebulous arena where time and space don't really exist. The Time Eater has an attack called the Sunburst, where he literally shoots a sun at you. And yeah, that, and this was the one who was like, okay, goddammit, he's cooking a little too much. Um, I don't know, man. That line could mean anything, bro. That line could that that, that line could be Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. What the fuck do I keep doing that? Black Doom. <laughs> Uh, that line could be Black Doom talking to like Gerald or Maria, like that's like standing next to Shadow, talking about something. Oh yes, he's a destroyer. He will destroy you all or whatever. And then, like Shadow in retaliation is like, oh yes, I will be the warrior and destroyer that will destroy you type shit. I don't know. It could it could be interpreted in so many different ways. But God damn it, he's cooking too fucking much, man. <laughs> he's cooking too much Both with this. Both bosses require collecting chaos emeralds by traveling to different parts of the world that you've already visited in the past, or in some cases the future. And both require striking a core to damage them like i can't say anything like what do you want me to say like what what do you want me to say to that like you're right like i, I, I don't know <laughs> i don't know what to do. in fact i've never noticed just how much the perfected form of the time eater and the first phase of solaris look alike maybe i buy into this theory a little bit more than i thought and that's not to say that i think that this was the plan all along i just think that these are a series of happy coincidences that could tie everything together we know that compared to base gens, Shadow Generations has a lot more to offer in terms of dialogue between characters, more akin to the days of Heroes, Shadow, and 06. As seen in the fight with Metal Overlord, oh, dialogue- Oh, okay, I, 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 don't, I don't want to see the actual boss fight. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's skip ahead until he's not showing it. ...happens during gameplay, and the characters will talk to each other, so I wonder what the dialogue between Shadow and Mephilus will be. Like I said, it's entirely possible that, much like with big fans, <laughs> once a character is defeated, don't you don't see really it, see them again. We could just get small cutscenes to extend the interactions and that's it, but it really seems like the game is going all out and like we're going to explore things in a lot more detail than the base game. As well, we know that Omega is a character you'll be saving, or at the very least meeting up with, in Shadow's white space. It could be that, much like the base version of Generations, characters show up next to their respective level entrances too. Omega makes sense for Bullet Station, and assuming that Maria and Gerald are real and not an illusion, they make sense to be who you save from the arc slash radical highway. In fact, considering that they're two characters, and the arc slash radical highway is technically all one stage, that makes even more sense. I'm just real. This isn't in the, this isn't in the script. I just realized while saying this out loud. Because I don't think radical highway is a separate level. I think that the arc and radical highway as like the illusion that Black Doom creates are one level. So being that it's like a compound level, rescuing Maria and Gerald there would make the most sense, you know? But who would you save at Kingdom Valley? Elise? Who's there for Sunset Heights? Infinite? What about Chaos Island? The only character that makes sense is Sage. And all three of them have closer ties to Sonic than they do to Shadow, but I almost think that's why. While this is undoubtedly going to be something that fills the gaps of Shadow's story, it's not something we really need when you think about it. Shadow the Hedgehog and, to an extent, 06 kind of closed the door on those subjects. Sure, things were maybe a little messy, but I don't think many of us were left with a lot of questions regarding Shadow. But we still had many regarding the larger Sonic mythos and Shadow's connection to it. I think that more than re-exploring Shadow's past, we'll be exploring Shadow's relationship to Sonic as a character and how their stories are intrinsically intertwined. And seeing it through that lens, the title of the game almost makes more sense. It's not Sonic and Shadow Generations because they're not going on this adventure together, but Sonic X Shadow Generations because one revisits his history while the other revisits his dynamic with the other. In a way, a lot of Shadow's adventures wouldn't happen, or at least wouldn't go down the same, without Sonic. And while I do think that what Shadow will do in his adventure will have a huge impact that recontextualizes how we see the main story of Jens, I think it's something that will also involve a huge sacrifice on Shadow's part. He's had to face his past before, but now he's doing it literally, and while he's better equipped to handle it, what he needs to do to make everything right, I think, is the ultimate expression of letting go. He needs to let Gerald and Maria return to their time and fates, and to do so, he needs to let Sonic deal with the Time Eater to fix the timeline. 
it may not even be that Shadow is physically incapable of handling this himself. It's more so that he needs to acknowledge that this particular job is Sonic's to handle. And so, having done everything to make sure the Sonics fight the Time Eater, all Shadow can do is appear to Sonic before his final encounter, banking on him to pull out the miracles he always does. With a newfound respect for him, he looks down and lets him know. You got this, Sonic. Thanks for watching. Type shit. I think, I think, like, like I said, he has some great ideas. I just don't believe that Mephiles will, I just don't believe it, you know? Everything else is valid, though. Like, definitely can't argue what he's saying, like, at all. And it leading back up to this scene would be peak as fuck. It really would be. It really would be. And I feel like they could still spin it the way that he's spinning it right here. It just, I, it's just the Mephiles thing is a bit of a, it, it, I, I can't even say it's a reach because, I mean, like, he's kind of right. Like, he's right, but I, don't, I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. It could happen. It would just be kind of, like, dick suck if yeah mephiles is the only person that's involved and, like no neo metal is not involved like he just he just becomes a regular boss like they add infinite like he's not more involved like damn like it's just dick sucking mephiles right like i guess which is like fine because it's mephiles but it's like you know what i'm saying i think that's just what it comes down to but honestly great fucking theory though great fucking theory